Um, allow me once again greet you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Uh, we are here once again that we may listen from the beautiful uh, uh, word of God and we may have to hear what he has for us today. And allow me to uh, register my appreciation for the PKs who have just sung wonderfully. May the good Lord bless you. The PKs to Pastor Jacob Akari. We are happy for you and thank you for lifting your voices to God. May the Lord bless you. And I mean, may the Lord bless you. Uh, once again, I want to appreciate the ministry of uh, the young adults. We have been with you before. And I thank you for the wonderful singing. We are here to support you and uh, make sure that uh, you get the best from this particular church. God also bless you for that wonderful singing. Choristers, thank you so much for your ministry of singing. And I thank you, all of you who have served from uh, Sabbath school and uh, the Sabbath school teachers for the good work you have done. Uh, I have seen an extraordinary confidence in a certain young man who stood here. And I was asking myself at this age, where was I? Did I even understand who I, who I, who I, who I was by then? And I felt challenged that uh, as uh, a church and as parents, we have a responsibility. And when you find such golden confidence in such a young man, then it means something is cooking in the children's ministry. What do you say? So when you keep your child off from uh, coming to this church, believe me, you, you are missing a rod. So thank you so much for that young man. We are praying for you that the Lord may also use you as you grow up. Um, once again, I, allow me to recognize our EKUC Executive Secretary, Pastor Dr. Marundu, for being here with us, sir. We are so much happy to have you. God bless you. And thank you for the humility of sitting to be served by a young man like me. God bless you. Also allow me to appreciate what is going on in the communication department spearheaded by Jason Yantino. God bless you. We recognize what you are doing and we are praying for you. Not forgetting the new Life magazine that went viral some days back. That was powerful and may the good Lord keep on using you in the communication department. We appreciate you. Um, around me also do two more assignments. One, the South Nairobi Kachiado Field as a fundraiser that is scheduled to take place in the month of June. And we as uh, the New Life SDA Church members, we are requested to help in this particular fundraising at our various WhatsApp groups and in our groups. So kindly allow God to use you in that capacity. When you will hear the call to serve by giving kindly, accept and be used of the Lord. If you accept, say amen. Thank you so much. Lastly, but not least, um, after this, we have a wedding. Somebody's uh, looking at me, Pastor, are you serious? Yes, we have a wedding after this. And uh, it is a wedding between Christian and Samuel. So kindly, we are requested, and being an extension of our prayer and fasting Sabbath, so I know today we are not eating, so we will be fasting in the wedding. Praise the Lord. We'll be fasting the wedding. So kindly be here and let us actually. But if you color the food, you see me, I'll tell you where to take it. 
And uh, in that con uh, you know, conjunction, we have uh, two pastors who are, who are here with us, Pastor Dr. Chelat Mochoge and Pastor Mbogwa, kindly. If you can hear this uh, call, kindly you can just stand up and say hi to us. If I may not ask too much of this, you can hopefully the that is Dr. Mochoge Cherad. Pastor, thank you so much. I'm holding uh, for you from here, and uh, when we are done, you just come here for the wedding of uh, of officiate that wedding. And for the uh, young people who are marrying Christine and Samuel, we are here for you. We will pray for you. And it is in order to have a, a wedding properly organized on a Sabbath. Praise the Lord. Because young people are shying away from weddings because they are saying they are expensive. We have a, a well, purely organized wedding on a Sabbath. Which is blessed to uh, have the blessings of uh, four pastors. Praise the Lord. That on sa of Sunday, there is a day, there is a lot of pool and water for you. But kindly, today we are inviting to partake of that and we are ready to support you. God bless you. Having said this, allow me now get into our message of today. Allow me get into our message of today and let us pray. Our Lord and our Father, we are here once again. We are ready to hear from thy whole scriptures. My father speak to us once again because it is we, your children who are coming once again. We may be unworthy, but Lord cleanse us and let us be ready to hear, thus says the Lord. Our humble supplication in Jesus' name, amen. A couple before dinner, one of them, probably the husband, turned to his wife, to, to his wife and said this, my wife, we are married now for 27 years. And for these 27 years, you have been cooking for me. Praise God for ladies who cook for their beloved husbands. But the unfortunate part of this, I cannot be able to recall each meal that you have been able to cook for me. And yet today is another one. The man said, despite the fact that I'm not able to recall each meal you have been cooking for me, one thing is sure to me, that these meals have been able to bring me this far. And he goes on saying, Today yet is another one. So I appreciate you for cooking for me. You may ask why I chose to bring this here. But I want to just say this. I don't know for how many years you have been in this church. But I know how many for myself. And I may not know how many sermons you have listened to. By the way, the parents who came to bless our wedding today, you are also welcome. Because if I can't do that, then I will be great. I may not be able to know how many sermons you have listened to. And some of those who came to church 
marking them. You know, we have uh, interesting Christians. When they see somebody stand to preach, theirs is to begin marking every mistake that is committed during that preaching. So many of those, you have listened to them. Others who are approving, and one of those ma made you to make a decision for Christ. But one thing for sure I know, you may not be able to remember even one. Even that that was preached last Sabbath. But what I'm sure is this, all those good sermons, they have brought you this far as a Christian. And yet today, is, here is another one. What you will do about it, I don't care. How you will treat it, it's up to you. But for sure what I know is, this one will take you to the next one. But my question is, what is the impact? Because somebody who is, who is eating, you can see there is a lot of evidence. Somebody said if you want to know that a man is eating well, there is an evidence. So I don't know what is the evidence that you have been spoken to for so many years. Now come to me to this sharing that is entitled A Disappointed Father. A Disappointed Father. A Disappointed Father. A Disappointed Father. That's in the house. I want to pose this uh, question to you. Have you ever been disappointed? And have you ever been disappointed to a point you almost decided to pack and leave your family? One day my mom told me, I'll pack and I'll go forever. And I asked her, where are you going at this age of yours? So, when somebody is disappointed, he may say, he may do things that he or she was not supposed to. A disappointed father. Jacob ends blessing the sons to Joseph. The sons whom he had adopted to be his. So when the blessing ends, Jacob gives his sons an assurance of living for the generations to come. Through a wrong years of bondage and sorrow, this testimony of his faith. And Jacob said these words. I mean, the book of Genesis, chapter 48. And Jacob said, Behold, I die, but God shall be with you. And bring you again unto the land of my fathers. So the book of Genesis chapter 48 ends when Jacob is blessing the sons of Joseph. Whom he adopted to be his. And he gives them an assurance of the future. And he tells them, you know what, my grandsons, the Lord will be with you. And throughout all the generations, indeed the Lord will be with you. That aside, now Jacob comes in the book of Genesis chapter 49. You begin first number, four, uh, first number one, Genesis 49, verse number 1, the Bible says, Jacob called his sons and said, Gather yourself together, 
that I may tell you what will happen to you in the days to come. Assemble yourself and hear you sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel your father. So when Jacob is done blessing his grand sons on his sick bed, on his sick bed, somebody told me, when you find somebody dozing in church, one is praying for you, two, he never slept at night, three, he was beaten at night. So Jacob calls his 12 sons. And when he calls his 12 sons, they come surrounding his dead bed. And in the African setting, when a dad who has been sick for a long time, when he calls, what next? He's going to die. And this is when men, you know, young men who even disregarded his father when he was alive, they will come. What have they come for? What have they come for? An inheritance. So the 12 sons, you know, blessed are you, those whose fathers rested like mine. Blessed are you if you received the last word from your father. It is very important. Some of us, we never received that. So, as a loving father, he calls all the 12 sons. And when he calls all the 12 sons, it is definite what they came for. Because Jacob was rich. So they came that he may divide an inheritance for them. God forbid that this is a time that, that brothers become good enemies. This is a time when brothers butcher each other. And this is a time when families are split in the middle. So I see Reuben as the firstborn approaching and standing right away on the air just at the chest where the dad was wringing his head i see simeon saying you know i'm the second pawn so i should stand next to reuben i saw levi i see judah coming there i see dan i see navidal i see Gad asher is called Seblam, Joseph, Benjamin, name them. So I want you to imagine these 12 young men surrounding their father who is just about to die. And somebody who has been sick for a long time, how does he utter the words? I want you to imagine. So the 12 young men are here. And they are ready to listen, saying, Are you seeing cut brown Mercedes pants? Because you are the first one, it belongs to you. Are you seeing that land I purchased at Kileleshua? Belongs to you. Young man in the house, when your father calls you, what do you expect? He gives you the bank accounts. He tells you, for the many years I've lived, I've managed to open five bank accounts. One is for Ruben. Two is for one and two. So they are attentive, keenly listening for the blessing that is coming forth from the mouth of their father. At the rest, all the sons of Jacob were gathered, as I have said. Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourself together. And hear you sons of Jacob, and hearken what will happen to you in the days to come. Often and anxiously, 
they had thoughts of their future and had endeavored to picture to himself the history of the different tribes. Now, as his children waited to receive this last blessing, the spirit of inspiration rested upon Jacob. And before him, in prophetic vision, the future of his descendants was unfolded. One after another, the names of his sons were mentioned, and the character of each was described, and the future history of the tribes was briefly foretold. As the twelve young men were standing just around the sick deadbed of Jacob, the pen of inspiration says that uh, Jacob had a foretaste of the future generation of the twelve sons. And it was vividly shown unto him how their lives will be. And the future history of all the tribes. Now, firstly, the Bible says, Jacob opens this up in fastly and it says, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my mighty and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power are those kind or oh, unkind words. They are beautiful words. So as protocol demands Jacob begins by saying because Reuben you are the first one I must begin with you so when Jacob begins with Reuben others were anxious that when he's done with Reuben then definitely he's coming to who? to me so Judah Simon were anxious waiting saying how wrong we take blessing, Reuben. The Bible says, and is stable as water, you shall not excel. I think now everything changed. And because I see these 12 men, when they were surrounding their father, they surrounded with tears of joy. And the tears of a departing father. And he began well by saying, Lupin, you are my firstborn. You are the excellency of my power. And you are the excellency of my dignity. He comes and saying, and staple as water thou is. You shall Notes, finish it for me. Excel. I love water. And they say, water is what? Life. But the same water that is life can as well take life. I love water, but uh, there is one behavior and the character of water I hate. Water takes the shape of any container. Put it in a balloon, what happens? Put it in a pot, what happens? Put it in your mouth, what happens? Pour it on the floor, what happens? That is one of the characteristics of water I hate. So Jacob is saying this to Reuben. Reuben, I love you. You are my son. You are the, you know, excellence of my dignity. You know, it's, you know, it, uh, it, uh, it sounds nice. It, uh, it is beautiful. Those who have uh, only one child and it's the firstborn. 
how does it sound when you have uh, the firstborn in, in your family? This is the time even the father wants to cut them and they do like this. But when you have one, two, three, what happens? Things change. They begin changing. So Jacob was posting about Reuben and he's saying, You are my firstborn. When I was mistreated by Reuben, you came. And it sounds nice when you have young men who are standing to you, you know, beside you. But he's saying this word that you, Reuben, you will not excel. Why is not Reuben excelling? Because you went up to your father's bed, then you defiled it. He went up to his couch. Listen to this. Reuben was suffering from spiritual instability. Reuben was morally unstable. That is to say, Reuben never understood who he was. Reuben never knew what he stood for. Allow me to repeat that. We have good Christians in this era who don't know or who don't understand what they stand for. And they say, if you can't stand for something, finish it for me. You fall for anything. We have good Christians, all of us are here. People who are not stable. People who are easily taken by the waves. Somebody said, if you find people walking and you begin running, what happens? What happens? You find people walking like this and uh, you just bypass them running. What happens? Automatically, they will follow you. Who told them? What if you find people walking? Oh, what if you find people running? You begin walking. What happens? Will they stop running? They begin walking. Think about that. We have people who are not spiritually stable. People who don't know what they live for and what they stand for. So, Reuben was such a person. And allow me to say this, there is a huge and unaffordable price that is always paid when an indecisive behavior is seen amongst us. There is a huge price and an affordable one that is always paid when we are people who are indecisive. There is no middle ground, my brothers and sisters, and no debate about this. That is why the Bible reminds us by saying we are supposed to free rook warmness. And allow me pause here and say this. We are living in a time whereby we don't have bad and good Christian, but we have middle Christians. So they are praying a fair game. You don't want God to lose, neither does you expect the devil to lose. So we are so many of us who are in between the close lots. But let me remind us this afternoon that God has nothing to do with our lukewarmness. And it is either we are for Christ or we are against him. I can't say I come to church, but I'm living a life of indecisiveness. I can't say I come to church. I'm here 
just for a little while and I cross over. God has nothing to do with our rook warmness, but the devil us. So when the devil realized that I'm a Christian who is not stable in his mind, when the devil realized that I am a young person who comes to church, when the devil realized that I'm an older member of this church who can partly come to church and partly do some other things, he's very happy because he knows God has nothing to do with you but the devil has. This was the state of indecisiveness Reuben was, was in. Remember when the other ten brothers wanted to give Joseph to sell him out. You know, Reuben was praying safe. He said, you know, instead of killing, what do you do? You just put him in this pit. But at the back of his mind, he wanted to come and save who? Joseph. But to me, Reuben, as the firstborn, was to stand on his feet and say, this is wrong. Stop it. Praise the Lord. That is, those are the people whom the world is cast off. People who stand and say, this is wrong and this is, you hate him. You pick him up. The world is tasked of people who will stand and say, drinking alcohol is wrong. Brothers and sisters, let us stand for Christ instead of standing with the devil. Let us stand for what is right against what is prominent. Let us stand for the truth against the rise. Let us stand in the right, despising darkness in the name of Jesus. Jacob had enormous and a lot of expectations from Reuben. Because Reuben had that capacity of being an example to others. So Jacob had a lot of expectations. Somebody says, said that have nil, zero expectations from human beings. Human beings can disappoint even those who you never expected to, to, to disappoint you. They will. There are people you trust beyond God. I'm sorry to say that. But there are people whom we trust so much in our lives and we have just put our trust in them. But little did we know they will disappoint us. So Jacob had enormous, had a lot of expectation on this young man, Jacob. So Jacob expected that Reuben was to show the way. Praise the Lord. I'm smiling because of this. That as we are seated, all of us here, we are supposed to show the way. Somebody sang a song and said, show me the way to the Father. Show me the way. But my question is, are we at a capacity, are we at a point of showing the way? The Bible says, there is no way a blind guide can lead another blind. One day, I was riding a bicycle to church. And uh, I found, a, you know, uh, one gentleman who had a challenge of hearing. And he told me, uh, Pastor, kindly give me a lift. That was my fourth time on a bicycle. You can imagine what was just about to happen. So, because I was good anyway, I told him, 
by signs. Thank you to those people who help us in the sign language interpretation. God bless you. I wish I knew it by that time. So as I was riding the, the bicycle down slope, unfortunately, the, the, the brakes failed. I have somebody here who cannot hear when I'm saying we are in danger. And I was an amateur. I don't, I, I, you know, I don't want to say what happened, but it happened anyway. And I came to a conclusion. Don't ever try leading somebody to a place where you have never been before. There is no way we can show the way if we don't know the way. No way, no way. There is no way we can get involved pointing people to Christ if we don't have a personal experience with Christ. Jacob expected Reuben to be decisive. Jacob expected Reuben to so case how by the way how how do Christian PF to showcase means you are supposed to show it practically. You tell somebody do this, you are supposed to do it fast. Not like the commanders who stand behind and they are pushing the armies. So Jacob expected that Reuben was to show the way saying, young men, this is the way. Allow me pause here. And begin from the end of this sermon and say this. The Bible, in the book of Romans 8, begin 28 to that, says that uh, Jesus, I'm just paraphrasing, is the firstborn of the other generations. And we are his firstborn. So meaning there are so many people who are following us. And the Bible denotes Reuben to be the firstborn. How many firstborns are here? Don't raise up your hands. How many firstborns are here? Are you living by example? When we had a meeting somewhere at home during the funeral, uh, by the fact of being a pastor, I expected to be given an opportunity to say hi. You can just pay. You are there. But believe me, you. I even never spoke my name during the funeral. But they asked, where is the first upon? And I was like, man, you don't see I'm a pastor here? A time come when being a firstborn in an institution comes with a price. You must pay. So being a firstborn comes with responsibilities. Praise the Lord. It comes, you know, there are some summons you let us hear men because they are not so kind. Anyway, they were not meant to be. So Jacob being a firstborn, there were some responsibilities attached to, to that. So the Bible calls us that we are the firstborn. So meaning there are people behind us who are ready to follow on our footsteps. Let me ask you, can somebody risk following you behind? How confident are you as the firstborn in the kingdom of Christ to tell somebody kindly you can follow me? I know the way. I know the way. And you know, when I was coming to church, the shepherd is uh, uh, at Mbagadi. So I carried them from Kitengera coming this way. And uh, I forgot the way to Mbagadi. So as I was driving, they asked me, Pastor, do you know the way to Mbagadi? I told them, yes, I've been to Mbagadi. Not twice, but once. So they said, Pastor, let's go. So the Google map I was using just took us somewhere else. 
And they asked me, Pastor, are you sure you knew, you, you knew the way? I said, yes, but I don't know what happened on the way. I had to apologize. Let me just tell you. It sounds nice. It sounds beautiful when you know the way. And when you know where you are going. And when you know there are people who are following you. I meant to myself. Jacob failed to show the way. What is this that it costed the dignity and the privilege of Reuben? Sexual misconduct. The sin of incensity. That is what the, his dad said. You are an unstable Reuben. You don't know what belongs to you and you don't know what belongs to others. You know, there are people who are not able to draw the line of demarcation, those properties which are, for, you know, for, for them and for others. We have people in this church who actually are not able to say, this is for me, this is for you. I think you understand what I mean to say. But it is time that we stand up and say, this is mine, this is for Pastor Kari. This is mine, and this is for Edda Mayaka. This is mine, and this is for my brother there. So, Ruben was not able to draw the line of distinction. Ruben allowed the devil to tempt him. Let me tell you this. Never should you allow the devil to tempt you beyond what you can endure. A time comes when you are supposed to call upon the help of the Lord. The Bible says that Lupin went and slept with Bilhah. Bilhah who was the concubine to Jacob. And the Bible says when he did that, he just marched out. The Bible says if you read in the book of Genesis chapter 35, verse 21 through 22, the Bible says, When Reuben did that, Israel had chanted and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Edel. And it happened when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with the Perihah. His father's concubine and Israel heard about it. You know, sometimes we do things. How many of us here have ever stolen sugar? Don't lift up your hands. You know, sugar is sweet. One day I stole. And I was called by my mom and they told me, Who leaked sugar? I said, It's not me. And they picked something from my mouth here and they said, And this? And I said, uh, it is me, ma'am. When Lupin had done this, he just marched out as if nothing has happened. And this is where most of us hide. At the back of our mind, we know we have done something wrong, but we are living, eating, walking as if nothing has happened. But lest did we know that the Lord saw it. The Bible says when Reuben did that, his father heard about that. And what a disgraceful moment for Reuben. What a disgraceful moment for Reuben. Yes, he did that sin. Reuben was that you are on option. I have some questions that I want you to think through as I'm reading. Reuben, was that your own option? Secondly, did you do a quick reflection of the consequences of what you are just about to do? And did you picture the price that was supposed to be paid? 
My question is simple. Reuben had so many options to choose from. And sometimes we do things as if that was the only option that was left for us. You find a person living a life as a Christian not knowing that we are here but just for a little while. My question is, Pastor, was that the only option that you were left? When you were going through the basket of options, was that one the only one? Reuben, were there no other beautiful ladies in Israel? Reuben, did you count the price that you were just about to pay? Because during the pronouncement of the fates of Reuben, I see everybody confused. You know, sometimes, as a parent, you can give a verdict which actually shocks you. As a loving father, I'm seeing Jacob giving this pronouncement while he's shedding tears, saying, Reuben, you know, I had no other option than just to serve you this. And he's saying, when I was just checking on my plates of food, this was the only food available for, for you. And even the 12 young men who are waiting for the blessings, they become discouraged. They say, if the first one can receive this, what, what of us? Reuben, was that the only option that was left for you? Sometimes there are things we do which depict that we had no option. There are places we go which depict that we had no another place to go than to go on a... Yes, that one. There are places we go as if we had no other option. There are those who are comfortably marching into nightclubs, dancing half naked. And uh, I'm a Christian. The question is, was that the only option available for me? I was doing a, a chaplain at St. Charles Mutego. A young lady came to me and told me, Pastor, I went for a pass. And we were there dancing the whole night. So the next day, I found myself sleeping with somebody whom I never knew. A very young girl of form three. And this lady used to come every day saying, Pastor, I need to go home. And I was concerned. What is happening? Little did I know that the girl was pregnant from somebody whom she didn't know. And I was asking her, Peter Lee, tears down my cheek was this the only option available for you children of God and is that the only option left for you we have so many options beautiful options to choose from that is not the way choose the Lord's way choose the Lord's way and when we have chosen the Lord's way we will show the way there are those to be met everywhere who have fixed the principles. This is the book, uh, the, the Bible commentary by Ichi Wait says, There are those to be met everywhere. There are those to be met everywhere who have no fixed principles. It is hard for them to resist the temptation. Let it come from, let it come from any quarter. And in what form it may be, and every precaution then must be taken to surround them with influences that will strengthen their moral power. Praise the Lord. We have our brothers and sisters in this church or elsewhere who don't have that muscle, that strength of saying no to some things. Ichi White says, we are supposed to surround them. We are supposed to encourage them, tell them, yes, you have fallen, but there is hope for you. There is help for you, and you can do it better. There are men of us like Reuben, unstable as water, having no inward, lectitude, 
not being straight, having no moral, you know, having moral defects. Their integrity is as at the stake. They are not able to make collect judgment. And like Reuben, they will not excel. What you need is to see your dependence upon the Lord. And to have a willing heart to get help. Now listen to this. That now a time has come and now is. That uh, we must be men. Be principled enough. Be men and women of dignity. Wherever we may be. Showing the strength of character. Where we might be. Be able through Christ's name to say no. To say no. I will not do this great wickedness and sin against God. Did you know the hardest thing somebody to do is to say no? Did you know? And when it has something to do with your integrity and your spirituality. The Bible says that now our time is you know, has come and now is that we need to stand tall and say no and say no. Let's say no to some things that are not beneficial to us and let us say yes for Christ. Jacob had ever been a man of deep and ardent affection. His love for his sons was strong and tender. And his dying testimony to them was not the utterance of partiality and resentment. He had forgiven all his sons and he loved them to the rest. His paternal tenderness could have found expression only in the words of encouragement and hope. But the power of God rested upon him and under the influence of inspiration. He was constrained to declare the faith of Reuben. You know, sometimes God is left with no option than to give us what we deserve. Because when he makes a picture all around him, there is no anything that we have infested for. So Reuben, as a loving father, yes, he loved all his children, but you know, that was the only, only thing that was for, left for him. As much as God is a God of love, God also is a God of justice. At times, God is left with no option than to serve us with what we deserve. How many times have you been tempted? And how many times did you stand for Christ and say no? Because temptation is all around us. From within us and from without. But how many times have you stood for Christ? Blessed are you if you stood for him. None of us has a valid excuse why we can fall into temptation because God has provided the needed mechanism for our escape. Praise the Lord. None of us should fall into the scaly traps of the enemy because the Lord has provided the way for you and the way for me. There is a way you can escape. No matter what kind of temptation come on your way, praise the Lord, Jesus was tempted as me and you, and he was victorious. Now he says, now then, come to the throne of grace, that we may just receive grace and favor in times of need. Now, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he is approved of the Lord, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Praise the Lord. Let none say, when I'm tempted, I'm tempted of the Lord. 
For God tempts no one, nor can he be tempted by evil. But each and every one of us is tempted when he is drawn by his own desires and is enticed. And when the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin has fully matured, it gives path to, do, to what, my friends? Death. My fellow Christians, none of us have a valid reason to us why we should not defeat temptation in the name of Jesus. When it comes on your way, God already has given the way out. Lord has shown the way because he says in the book of First Corinthians, Chapter 10, verse 13, where he says, There is no temptation that has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God, but who? God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what is able. But with the temptation, he will also make a way for what? For escape. There ever has been a way for us to escape. But we are not wise enough to see the entrance. That is why even in this church, there is so many ways of exit. So the Lord has opened so many ways for us to exit and to learn away from danger. Why must you remain there, die, when the Lord has opened the way of escape and he has opened eternal life to each and every one of us? Now, Soon and very soon, God shall call this world into order. When the verdict of each and every one of us shall be painfully declared. When the case of prominent Christians will be determined. When we shall receive a just reward of our sacred and repented sin. The time when the world will stand still, men like Reuben will receive a great disappointment from a disappointed father. Which side of the verdict will I be? The story of Reuben depicts what will happen when this world will come to an end. When the Lord will call this world into order. And when he says, it is finished, it is finished. And all of us will be surrounding the mercy seat. And the Lord will open his mouth and give the verdict of each and every one of us. How many of us will be like Reuben? By God saying, you know what? Yes, you are Christian. But dignity-wise, you, know, dignity you are helpless. You know, you are powerless. They say history repeats itself. My fellow Christians, a time is here that we stand for Christ. The division of the Padreite for Reuben went like this. That uh, Judah took the Messianic promise. And a double portion of the inheritance of Joseph. The tribe of Reuben never rose to any eminence in Israel. It was not so enormous as Judah Joseph then was among the first that were taken to captive. You know, as I'm crowning this, I want to say this. When the blessings were being given to the other 11 boys of Jacob, Reuben stood there helpless. What was due? You know, there is that that belongs to you. By force or by fire. And everybody knows that if this is for you, no matter what happens, as it stands that heaven belongs to our men of us, our men of us, friends, all of us. So Reuben stood watching. Reuben stood watching as the youths are coming to do a song. This is a special request from me. Come and do a hymn. Like everything that was rightfully for Reuben was taken by other young men. And because of this mistake, 
that Reuben did what was rightful, rightfully is was taken by somebody else. How does it feel when something that be wrong with you is taken by somebody as you are watching so painfully? That is what will happen if we can't stand for Christ. That is what will happen if we can't live by that says the Lord. There is a rampant sin of sexual misbehavior in the world today. Where people are, have married, have cheated in their marriage relationship to an extent. They say now it is better we go for LGBTQ. Some of those mistakes will be brought to book. And it is time we as Christians that we may stand tall because the Bible says that since the creation of the world, the invisible attributes of his turn of power and the divine nature has been clear seen, being understood through what is, what is made so that men are left without excuse because that even if they knew him as God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful. But he became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts was darkened. Was on saying, for if after they had here, their foolish hearts was darkened. My friends who are here today, I want to say this. That the Lord has given us all the necessary information that we are supposed to know and to aid us to live respectfully as Christians. And it is our time to choose from what is right against what is wrong. Despite what Rupert did, when history crosses in the book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 5 when the 144,000 are sealed the tribe of Reuben is mentioned praise the Lord despite what Reuben did when the 144,000 are sealed in the book of Revelation chapter 7, verse 4. The tribe of Reuben is mentioned. So then it means no matter how many times have you fallen into temptation, no matter what you have done before, still there is hope for you, praise the Lord. There is hope for you. There is hope for Christ. God is able to give you an opportunity to live for him again and show the way. But the question is, are you willing? The Bible says, those who are willing will eat the good of the earth. Now, your past mistakes does not det determine your destiny. I want to read this carefully because this is my appeal to each and every one of us. Your past mistakes does not determine your destiny, but the action that you will take thereafter will. Brother and sister, in our Christian journey, the means justify the end and the reverse is not true. What will actually culminate for us making it to heaven someday is the way we have walked. Hence, let us run this race before us in such a way that when the last trumpet shall sound, we will not be rejected but accepted in Jesus' name. This is my, pr my honest prayer, my wish, and my desire to each and every one of us. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.